Hey, hey, what's up, my friends? So welcome back to this month's price action analysis. This is a monthly video that I do to share with you my trading thought process. I share with you the best trading opportunities that I'm seeing in the markets right now. I walk you through my thought process, why I'm looking to enter a trade, where I'm looking to exit if a trade goes against me. What if the trade moves in my favor? How would I manage the trade and stuff like that? So if you have, you know, enjoyed my, you know, price action trading videos, my training on YouTube, and you want to see how I actually apply those concepts, strategies, and techniques in the real life market, then this type of video is for you. So without further ado, right, let's get started. So the first pair that I want to analyze is the Aussie against the Swiss franc. This is a loss that I have uh, taken recently. And I want to share with you this loss because sharing profits is so mainstream. It's all too, you know, boring. So let's talk about this loss. So Aussie Swiss franc, let me just walk you through. As you can see over here, this uh, market, the daily time frame is in an uptrend. So what I did is that I was looking for trading opportunities on the eight hour time frame, which is my trading time frame. So the opportunity came in at this point over here. Okay, so at this point, what happened is that, uh, as you've seen earlier on the daily time frame, we were in an uptrend. So let me just do a quick recap. You can see over here, daily time frame over here at this point, market is in an uptrend. So if market is in, in an uptrend, I'm looking for buying opportunities. Then on the eight hour time frame, here's what I saw. Market came into this area of value over here, this area of support. And what happened is that we had a false break, right? Notice how the price came into this lows of support, got rejected and closed higher, right, for this time period. So when I saw this, right, I am bullish on this and this was a signal for me to get on board the long trade. So I enter on the next candle open, which is this candle over here. On this candle open, I went long on this opening price. I had my stop loss 1 ATR below this lows, which is somewhere about here. So for those of you who are not familiar with this concept, let me just walk you through. So this is the ATR indicator. I go with the 20 period ATR using SMA. So what this tells me is that it tells me the historical volatility of this market and on this time frame. And what I notice is that for this market, historically, over the last 20 candles, right, it has an average volatility of, of about 30 pips. So what I did, right, is that I identified a low over here and minus off 30 pips from this low. So this is kind of like a buffer that I give myself on this trade in case the market spike below the lows and rebound higher. I want to give myself this buffer, right? So I don't get stopped out prematurely. So I added this uh, 30 pip stop loss to this low over here and my stop loss is somewhere about this level here around 8, 68 cents about here is my stop loss. So I had my first target just before this swing high. My first target just before the swing high somewhere just be around the 69 cent level. Okay, so what happened is that the market, okay, you can see over here, this market went a little bit against me, then started moving in my favor, and I'm like, oh, right, right looking too, looking uh, not too bad, right, let's see how this one plays out. Next thing I know, boom, right, reversal, and I got stopped out on this trade over here, on this uh, decline over here. So this is a loss that I, 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 I took, uh, and it's a perfectly, you know, valid trading setup that I take over and over again, but you have to understand that trading is all about probabilities and never certainty, and this is a loss that, you know, uh, I took it and I move on. And one thing to share as well is that why I also like this trade is that it also had the confluence of this 50 period moving average. You notice here, right? not only did we have this uh, area of support as the area of value, it also had this confluence of this 50 period moving average. So that you know uh, really made the trade to me a lot better, but still ended up a loser. Okay, so this is Aussie, Swiss franc, right? A trade uh, that I taken and I got uh, stopped out. Moving on, another Aussie pair is another trade that I took. This one is still kind of like pending the result over here. So you see over here on this Aussie Canadian pair, again, on the daily time frame, we are looking at the big picture. This market is still overall in an uptrend. So I'm still looking for buying opportunities. Market is in an uptrend. I look for buying opportunities. Market in a downtrend, I look for selling opportunities. So in this case, it's in an uptrend, looking for buying opportunities. Then again, on the eight hour time frame, I noticed something similar this we have this area of value this area of support market broke below it and then quickly rebound and close back above support i went long on the next candle open stop loss once again 180 ATR below this low somewhere about here so in this case you can see that uh on this time frame on this market the average true range is about 35 pips so what i did is that i calculate the low of this candle minus of 35 pips and that is my stop loss so my stop loss is about 97 cents which is somewhere about here about there Okay, so for me, right, again, the first target I had was before this swing high over here. So in this case, you can see that the market did now slightly, you know, heading in my favor and still, you know, 
too early to say whether this will be a winner or loser for this trade. So one thing to add is that also, right, uh, the reason why, to be honest, right, in terms of the price action setup of this pair, uh, it's not really the best that I like because you notice there's a minor series of, you know, lower highs coming into this area of support, right? That's usually a sign of weakness. I don't like to see this, but I kind of close one eye on this one because there's also another statistical behavior for this market on Aussie Canadian, which is, you know, whenever the price retest the previous week low or the previous week high, it tends to find support resistance. So let me explain. So if you look at this market, right, historically, right, if you do you know, your back testing, you notice that whenever Aussie Canadian retest the previous week low or the previous week high, it tends to find support. So in this case, what happened is that it found support, right, on this candle over here, which is the, the previous week low is this price point. So you can see that this week price retest the previous week low and now it's uh, heading a slight bounce higher. So with this statistical behavior, plus the price action analysis that I shared with you earlier, this to me warranted you know, uh, a long trading setup, right? And to see you know, how much further this market could move in my favor. So this is an Aussie Canadian. This trade is still pending and I will see how this one plays out. And oh, by the way, right? Uh, I'm also hosting a free two-day online trading event uh, on the 27th and 28th of February. Uh, we'll talk about, about you know trading strategies, techniques, mindset, and much more. If you're interested, I'll put the link below this video. You can check it out. And if you want more details, we can talk about it you know later towards the end of this video. But that is uh, really right for you if you know you've enjoyed my training so far and you want more uh, close in-depth training. That event right is for you. So I'll put the link just somewhere in below this video. And moving on, right next pair that I want to talk about is New Zealand yen. Okay, so again, building on the concepts that we have talked about earlier, basically identifying markets in an uptrend, we're looking for buying opportunities. So same thing for New Zealand yen. So for this one over here, if you look over here, right, again, at this point in time, market is still in an uptrend for New Zealand yen, series of higher highs and higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, pretty straightforward stuff. So what's interesting is that at this point, right, this is where I got interested to do business. This is at this point is where I got interested to look for buying opportunities. Why is that? And that's because the price pulled back towards this area of value where previous resistance could become support. And then I used the lower time frame, the eight hour time frame, right, to help me time my entry. So this is the same area you saw earlier, this area of value, previous resistance, which could become support. Price came into it, got rejected, closed back above support. All right, so this is where I got long. I entered on the next candle open, which is on this candle. I entered on the open. Stop loss again, 180R below this low. First possible target I said was just before this swing high. So this one is a bit, uh, a little bit uh, different. So let me explain you know, why I ended up uh, taking, taking off half my position at this swing high instead. So I know, right, that initially I set my first target at this swing high because this is the most extreme swing high. What happened is that the market did uh, move in my favor. And then over here, it shows signs of, you know, in signs of a weakness. So you notice how the price came into this area and it started to, you know, showing a bearish price rejection, you know, a couple of, you know, uh, lower close on the candles over here, right? We have a lower close and another lower close over here. So to me, right, at the back of my mind, right? Yes, my first target is at this swing high, but right now the market is telling me it has difficulty breaking above this swing high. And there's a possibility it could, you know, swing down back towards the lows or even hit my stop loss, you know, below here. So I had to make a choice. I could, you know, choose to be stubborn, right? And stick with that original uh, first target that I had or to adapt accordingly to this market condition. So what I did is that when the price did close lower, I took, half my position off on this candle and then to leave the remaining at the original stop loss and see whether the market could break out higher or reverse against me. So in this case, uh, fortunately enough for me, it did reverse uh, back in my favor as you see, right, slight dip and then it reversed back up high over here. So eventually, yes, it did might hit my first target, but you have to manage your, I would say, your expectations moving forward because if you were to not take any profit off the table, which is perfectly fine if you can endure the volatility volatility in the swings in your account is perfectly fine but you have to be prepared right that the market could also reverse back down towards the lows and then hit your stop loss so it's like the market almost came into your target profit but because you got stubborn you got greedy it hit your stop loss instead so this is kind of like expectations that you have to adapt and change accordingly as the you know, new price action unfold itself so uh, this is new zealand yet i'm still having half of my position on this trade, trailing my stop loss and see how far this market can go. So you can see over here on the daily time frame, the, the trend is still hitting up higher and I'm just trailing my stops on the remaining position and see how far this market can go. All right, New Zealand Yen. And one last final uh, chart that I want to share with you is this stock over here. 
right? Plug. So plug, right? Just a brief overview. This company develops a uh, hydrogen based uh, battery cells. This is kind of like to replace the traditional type of, type of batteries that you have in the market. And the benefit of this type of batteries is that, you know, you recharge faster. So when, you know, you use it in cars and stuff like that, right? The downtime when the battery is charging is not as long. So this is uh, definitely, a, I would say, kind of like the, maybe the future of batteries. I have no idea. I'm not really a fundamental person. But you can see that the price action of this stock, right, is strong, right? Over the last, you know, since 2020, you can see that the advance in price has been steadily insane few right so right now okay what's interesting right now is that this market seems to be forming a i would say digesting right the recent upswing in the move so you notice the candles the recent range of these candles over here they're kind of like you know uh not really going anywhere not going higher not going lower just kind of like you know consolidating so this to me right it's a uh, a sign of a uh, a strength, right? Because it's telling me that the market is taking a pause, taking a breather, storing potential energy, right? For the next wave higher. So when do you buy or when do you enter this trade? So for me, I like to use, since for me, right? I know that this market is in a strong uptrend. I'm looking for buying opportunities. But if you look at this, right? Compared to the earlier setups that I shared with you, where, you know, we trade from an area of value, like support, swing low, there is no like obvious swing low until maybe possibly around this level here or over around here. And if you ask me, there's a good chance that the market will not retest this level because it's pretty far away. So you've got to kind of like, kind of map up, right? Other course of actions that you'll take, right? To enter this particular trading setup. So what I'm looking for is a trend continuation trade, looking to buy the breakout in the direction of the trend. And the way I will look at this, or rather the way that I will see that the market is getting ready to make a move is to use the 20 MA as a guideline. So this is the rate 20 period moving average over here. What I want to see is for the 20 MA to catch up with the price. So in other words, I want the 20 MA to slope up higher and look for the price to retest the 20 MA. Once it has retest or touched the 20 MA, this is to me is a sign, right? A signal that, hey, the market has digested this recent uh, consolidation and is getting ready to make the next wave up higher. So what, I'm, what I'll do then is that if the price has caught up with, or rather the 20 MA has caught up with the price, I'm looking to buy the breakout above this swing high. So what it can do is that if the price breaks above swing high, can look to buy or you can wait for a break and close above this swing high right before you enter the trade so you know whichever is your preference right? i don't think there's you know one is better than the other but for me personally i'm looking for a break and close above the highs before i get long so this is a, a setup on plug power that i'm looking at and the way i'm going to manage this trade is that i'm just going to have a 30 percent trailing stop loss on this on this trade or if you don't want to go with a percentage trailing stop loss you can also go with a chandelier curl stop which actually measures the uh which takes into account the volatility of the market. So let's say if you go with a 5 ATR multiple or even a 6 ATR multiple, you can just simply trail a stop loss right using this blue line. So this means, right, if the market breaks out higher, okay, let's say it breaks out higher, this blue line will go up higher as well. And the way this blue line is being calculated is that it takes the extreme highs over here and then it minus 6 ATR from here to here, right, minus 6 ATR, let's say here 6 ATR, and that is your trailing stop loss. So basically, the multiple that I set earlier over here, I set this to 6, right? Is 6 ATR from the highs. Give you this blue line. If you want something more conservative, right? Maybe like a 3 ATR, you can as well. And your blue, all right, in this case, it's a bit messed up because of the uh, indicator settings. But let's say we go with 4 ATR. You can see that the blue line will be much more closer to the, uh, the price of the market. So depending on how much buffer or how much room you want to give this this trade to run, right? The wider trailing stop loss will allow you to stay in the trend longer to capture a longer term trend. But the downside to this is that you would risk giving back more open profit. So this case is kind of like a a detail, a, a balance, right? You have to find, right? Whether you want to go with, you know, 4 ATR, 5 or 6 ATR. But for me personally, I usually go with a 5 or 6 ATR because I want to, you know, ride the longer term trend and I don't want to get stopped out, you know, on the short term pullback. And of course, right? I embrace, right? The fact that I might have to give back more open profits and I perfectly, I'm perfectly fine with that okay so this is plug power a trading setup that i'm looking at this week and as mentioned right if you want to uh learn more about the two-day event i mentioned earlier it's called profitable trading secrets you can go to my website over here tradingwithrainer.com slash webinar this is a two-day event right you can see that day one we will talk about you know simple price action trading uh using 20 over charts to explain to you more about the price action trading methodology day two we talk about stock trading over here uh, tools that I use, trend following system, and much more. So this event is completely free. Just go to this website here, click this green button, you'll be brought to the Zoom registration page. Just sign up here and you will be uh, reserved a ticket right for this event. Okay, so with that said,
I'll put the link here again somewhere below so you can sign up for it. I wish you good luck, good trading. I will talk to you soon.